Hey guys, I'm back with Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our Ballistic Gel Block Test. And today we're kicking off a brand new series uh, in 10 millimeter auto. And we're gonna be doing this with a 140 grain Maker P-Rex bullet. This is the Pistol Rex, uh, all copper expanding bullet. And uh, we'll be putting this through its paces in 10 millimeter in the gel block. So let's get turned around here and take a look at the loading and then we'll get headed out to the range. But before we do that, I'd like to make just a couple of notes. So up here in this information link, if you if you click on that, it's gonna open up a link to our website at KentuckyRangeTime.com. Uh, you'll find w over 100 affiliate partners there. And there's a, a listing, you scroll down through the listing and you, you find the affiliate that you wanna shop with. Uh, and there's a ton of them there. Like I said, there's, there's right at 100. We've got US Optics, we've got Midway USA, we've got Mid-South Shooting Supply, and Natchez, and Brownells, and Arrow Precision, and Stag Arms, and Sig Sauer, and Raven Crossbows. It's not just gun stuff. There's uh, there's hiking and camping and survival stuff on there. Uh, Coast, uh, Coast Portland, they've got all kinds of rechargeable flashlights and batteries. Uh, I've got several of those I need to get a couple of videos out on in the future, but uh, scroll through there and, and just take a, take a couple of minutes and see what companies are there and if you shop with any of these if you'll navigate to that home page and click that link and start your shopping from there uh, it'll take you to their home page and anything you purchase while you're there will will generate a small commission for the page this is my sole point of advertising i don't i don't actually have a whole lot of sponsors or anything like that but this these affiliate links uh, actually bring revenue back into the page and that's why i used to offset the cost of the gel block and the bullets and the powder and uh, all the primers and all the supplies that go into uh, getting this stuff back and forth to the range and doing these videos. So I uh, would appreciate any help you have there. Also in the slides, you notice uh, we do have a, a KRT Daily Deals page on X. And what that is, is we take all the different emails we get from these different affiliate partners every day. Uh, probably 15 or 20 of these partners will send out emailers about every day. And we scroll through those and take out the best deals and the best values or new products that are just coming out on the market. And we will create a direct link uh, slide and post that up in KRT Daily Deals. And you can click those. Uh, if you watch the KRT Daily Deals, you can get rid of a lot of the other emails. Um, and uh, you know it's just quick and easy. And we also cross post uh, those those. KRT Daily Deals on the Gun Deals page, community page on X. Uh, that's a, a page administered by Gun Coyote, so go check those guys out too. And uh, any help you can give us there, we appreciate. So, all right, let's turn around and take a look at this loading real quick, and then we'll head on out to the range. All right, guys, so here it is. So, uh, of course, the Maker Bullets, uh, Winchester Large Pistol Primers, and CFE Pistol Powder from Hodgdon. And uh, I don't run a lot of CFE. I, I've got several loads, um, several favorite powders for my favorite loads. Uh, and I have just not taken time to, to run CFE in some of these. Uh, it's possible that this could be a good replacement for some of the other powders I've got, but I just haven't taken time to test it out yet. But uh, anyway, so this is what we've, we've got. And here is the, the load data is all in the spreadsheet as long as well as all of our, all of our data. This will be in the slideshow at the end, and I'll have like 10 or 15 seconds on it, so you can pause on it there. Uh, this bullet, like I said, this is a segmented bullet. You can see, if I get it focused, there you go. You can see that this bullet has been uh, wire EDM cut, uh, the pedals in it, to, uh, to help aid in expansion and opening this thing up. So a nice big hollow point there. And uh, crunch. So, all right, here's a good look at the loading on this, and you can see that there's quite a bit of this bullet down in the case. And of course, uh, an all copper bullet uh, is gonna have a larger volume uh, than, than an equivalent weight lead bullet. And all that extra volume has to go down in the case uh, to keep the overall length the same, which actually reduces the amount of powder we can put in this. So, uh, uh, but uh, stay tuned and, and check this thing out in the gel block. Uh, this thing still uh, does, uh, does amazing. So let's get turned around here and head out to the range and I'll let you guys see for yourself. Hey guys, my Kentucky Range Time back at Northeast Kentucky Fish and Game. And today we're getting ready to kick off a new caliber in our ballistic gel block test series. And the caliber is gonna be the 10 millimeter. And honestly, this is one of my favorite handgun cartridges. Uh, I absolutely love shooting a loading 10 millimeter. 
Uh, it is such a beast of a bullet in such a compact size. And uh, so today I actually have, uh, I'll have four upcoming tests in 10 millimeter right off the bat. I've got a lot more bullets to load later, but this test is gonna be focusing on the 140 grain uh, P-Rex from, uh, from Maker Bullets. And this is an all copper segment of the bullet and we should get some really good expansion out of this. Uh, Velocities will be coming on the Garmin Procero C1 and I have a brand spanking new gel block out here on the table from Clear Ballistics. Uh, this will be the first round shot in this gel block. I've been kind of saving it back for this bullet and actually for this load. Uh, really wanting to see what this, uh, this P-Rex will do out here. And the bullets that'll be coming up pretty quickly is the uh, Hornady 200 grain XTP, the Hornady 180 grain XTP, and my little speed demon. This is the 135 grain uh, Jack of the Hollow Point from Nosler. And this and the 200 grain both are, are pushing 700 plus foot pounds of energy out of a 10 millimeter. And uh, that's uh, that's equivalent. That's right about the energy we were getting in the, some of the 44 mag loads out of the, uh, the two and three quarter inch combat magnum. So that's, uh, that's what we're looking at today. And then the testing format, uh, it's more than just a Glock 20. So this is a Glock 20 with a, a Storm Lake uh, replacement barrel because I do cast and, and powder coat and shoot lead bullets in this as well. So we've uh, traded that out for the Glock factory and barrel. I also have a six inch barrel from Lone Wolf and we will be shooting both of these barrels with each one of these bullets as we progress through this test. And later on, I might even pick up a, a longer barrel. I know they make a nine inch barrel drop in for the Glock 20. And I've also been looking at a, an AR platform in 10 millimeters. So if, uh, if I pick up a, a, that, another longer barrel or uh, that AR platform, then we'll be adding those to the test, uh, test format as well for future loads. And I'll probably come back and retest some of these loads that, that we didn't have it in. But all right, let's get started. All right, guys, so I had a little technical difficulty getting the camera going and I missed the the downrange view of, of the first shots with these, this P-Rex bullet. So I'm gonna redo uh, these, this clip real quick. And so we're gonna start out with the 140 grain P-Rex uh, all copper bullet from Maker now, Bullets. I've already put both these in the gel block. I've already put them both in the backstop to get the, the, the velocity, the two shot average on the velocity. And I'm just running these so you can see the recoil um, from the gun on this one. And I've got the camera set up a little bit more of a side angle, so you'll you'll better be able to see that recoil. And again, I'm just gonna put these down there in the backstop. All right. So that was the 140 grain P-Rex out of the uh, Glock 20 and Let's go check out the catch on that one. All right, guys, so here's the entry point for the T-Rex bullet. And uh, looks like we had a complete expansion down here by about one and a half inches and uh, a total wound track down here about 10 and a half. And here is a good look at that bullet. Like I said, this is a, a piece of brand spanking new gel block. And there's a good look at that. All right, now let's, uh, let's go ahead and swap barrels on this and we'll check. Uh, And this is the P-Rex 140 grain all copper out of the six inch barrel for the Glock 20. All right, we 
they are clear. And let's go check out the catch on this one. All right, and then right here is the, the start of the wound track for the six inch Glock barrel. And looks like a looks like our expansion started maybe just a tad bit quicker on this one than it did with the shorter barrel. And the wound channel is just a little bit larger here. And total penetration down here at nine and a half inches. And here is a good look at this one. And this bullet actually, get the glare off of it here, Looks like the pedals on this one opened up just a little bit farther back than it did with the longer barrel or with the shorter barrel. And that is a function of the longer barrel and uh, the added velocity on this round. All right, guys, back in the shop and we've got these things dug out and here's a look at the results. So here is our unfired bullet. And this is the 4.6 inch barrel and this is the six inch barrel. And as you can tell here, the pedals on the four inch barrel opened up almost uh, to 90 degrees and the pedals on the six inch barrel actually opened up just past 90 degrees. So really good showing out of both of these bullets. And uh, you can see right here a little bit better what I was talking about on, on how far the pedals opened up. So uh, the, the velocity difference on these was uh, 1,210 foot per second on the, the 4.6 inch barrel and 1265 foot per second on the six inch barrel. So we had a 55 foot per second velocity difference. And this is the difference that 55 foot per second makes on these two rounds. Uh, very nice numbers. Uh, average energy on this was 455 foot pounds and 498 foot pounds. Uh, of course, 100% weight retention on both of these bullets and penetration was 10 and a half inches with uh, the four inch barrel and nine and a half inches with the, uh, with the six inch barrel. So uh, and that was average on a, on a two shot velocity. Final expansion, we had a 0.893 average uh, for, for the four inch barrel and a 0.939 on the six inch barrel. So some really good numbers there guys uh, coming in here on this, on this all copper bullet. And out of 10 millimeter, this thing is just a beast. All right, guys, and this is the this is the bullet out of the six inch barrel, and this is a 139% expansion on this bullet. Uh, absolutely, absolutely wonderful expansion numbers on this thing. Paul did a, a remarkable job on this one. Uh, the only drawback that that this bullet has, it's 140 grain, and because it's an all copper. Uh, 140 grain at the velocity that this was running at just did not have uh, the penetration that you would want. Now, this 139% expansion <laughs> really hinders this bullet on uh, on its penetration depths as well. So, you know, it's a it's a serious trade off. the 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 temporary wound channel, as you saw in the video on this, was massive. Uh, the, the The hydrostatic damage that this is going to do is is substantial. And this bullet is going to cut uh, just a, a path of devastation in for the distance that it goes. But uh, would like to have seen a few more inches, you know, another four, five, six inches of penetration out of this. And, and then it would be the perfect uh, defensive bullet for 10 millimeter. Uh, so anyway, guys, just, uh, just another awesome uh, showing for Maker Bullets and, and Paul over there. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to take a copper bullet with a bigger volume and, and losing the powder that gives you the velocity. And, and it's hard to get that extra penetration out of, out of a 140 gram bullet. So uh, completely understand why we got the penetration that we did, but still would like to have seen just a little bit more. And, uh, and maybe stretching the powder charge up there a little bit and going into some, uh, some sub-nuclear loads uh, would probably get I'm, you there shooting this out of a Glock so keep that in mind. Always, always work up uh, to powder charges that are safe in your gun. So knowing I'm running this out of a Glock and knowing I'm running this out of this Storm Lake and this Wolf barrel, and I'm, I'm confident I've shot and loaded for these barrels for years now, and I was confident enough for my gun to go a little heavier uh, on the charge for this. So I actually kept the 7.6 grains uh, with the copper bullet. Normally I would decrease that load a little bit, 
uh, for an all copper bullet from going from a lead core bullet to a copper bullet, but I, I felt comfortable keeping that load on this one. And after seeing the brass and, and, and firing this, I would be comfortable stretching this up a little bit hotter. So, but that's a, that's a function that you guys as the loaders are gonna to have to make, uh, taking into account your equipment and your experience of loading for this. So, uh, uh, you know, I've, I'm running a 24 pound guide rod spring in this Glock 20 as well, which uh, allows me to run loads quite a bit higher than, than, than listed book velocities. And uh, so that all plays back into this. So just, just be safe with what you do and work your loads up slowly to make sure you don't damage anything, especially yourself. Um, so all right, guys, uh, questions or comments, uh, I'd be glad to hear those. Post them up in the, in the comments here. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button the like button, leave me a comment. And if you've got social media sites where other people would enjoy this video, feel free to copy the link and share this link out to somebody else. Uh, those four items along with uh, checking out the affiliate links uh, webpage and, and, and doing some shopping there uh, are, is the best way that you can help support this page and keep me going. I've had a lot of questions over the last couple of weeks about do I plan on doing 45 Colt uh, series? And yes, the answer to that is I do plan on eventually making my way to 45 Colt. Right now, I don't have any firearms to, to test 45 Colt in and to do the test the way I like to do them. I'd like to have at least three different firearms, three different barrel lengths. I'd like to have a, a short barrel, a, a medium barrel, and a carbine length barrel to test in. So I will be starting to acquire those over the next several months and maybe even a year before I get started on that. Uh, it just depends on how, how well everything does and how much disposable cash I have to put to the extra firearms. Uh, I am getting ready to pick up a 444 Marlin. That will be my next uh, next caliber that I add. I actually already have that priced over to that local gun store over here. Probably will be picking that up in the, in the next several days. Uh, and then I'll be going back through all these 44 mag bullets. I think I've tested something like 23 different 44 mag bullets to date, and I'll be testing most, if not all of those, uh, in the 444 Marlin as well to see how these things perform. Uh, the additional velocity can be very devastating for some of these bullets, especially the, the standard uh, hollow, uh, XTPs and hollow points uh, at 10 yards, uh, but we'll see how they do. Uh, you know, we may be driving some of these too hard, but there again, let's, uh, let's just see what bullets will work in 444 and which ones won't. So. Uh, these all coppers and this 265 grain uh, interlock that we tested earlier that did nothing in 44 mag, uh, we should be able to get some good expansion on that one out of the 444 as well. So, all right, guys, back to Kentucky Range Time. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.